Hello, my name's Pete, aka Houseborn, and this is Houseborn's World. If you're new to the channel, please go and check out some of my other videos. For the regulars, you'll know that my channel launched off the back of my brand new Ryzen 1700X PC build. I bought the Corsair Obsidian 450D case, and when I put that case together and I fitted my NZXT X62 Kraken water AIO cooler in, I no longer had space for any of my old hard drive arrays that I had in my previous case. As a workaround, I went out and brought myself a one terabyte SSD for my games and media storage. But initially, it was only going to be for games, but like anything, any little stopgap never works. And I got to the situation where very recently that one terabyte drive is nearly full and I think I've got something like five gigabytes left. It's a shame because I've recently purchased some games that I really wanted to have a look at. One of them being the Bean NG drive and I'm going to get that on the channel soon but I just couldn't install it so I had no room. It's been a long time plan that I wanted to get a NAS instead of putting internal storage in your PC. So what's the up and plus points of having a NAS? Well simply you don't have to have your PC on all the time if you want to access any of the stored files. Not only that, it's going to be far cheaper to run than your main PC system. The Synology DS918 Plus comes with its own operating system and imagine it as a little small form factor PC in itself. You can create virtual machines, you can host IP cameras on it, you can use it as a DHCP server, you can use it as an internet download server. Um, you can basically, there's a lot of things you can do. So today's video is just going to be the unboxing and the fitting of the hard drives. And in some future videos I'll bring this a brief setup guide. So let's get the box open and have a look because I've been waiting for this. With the Vlogmas videos that I've been doing, I've just been so busy and I've had this for a couple of days. I've not, honestly, not took it out of the box or even looked at it. And I'll be fair, if you're going to pick one of these up and you've never had a NAS before, it's something that you shouldn't rush into. You really want to think about how many drives you're going to fit in, how many drives can physically fit in the NAS you're buying and what sort of RAID configuration you want to set it up in. Um, you can set it up in the old school RAID configurations uh, 0, 1, 5 and 10 or you can use the Synology Hybrid RAID SHR or SHR2. The Synology Hybrid RAID gives you different levels of backup on the drives and I'll cover that more in detail when we go to configure the device. But for the minute, we're just going to get it opened up. So within the box, we've got power supply, free pin plug, pretty much standard. Um, I'm going to get this all the way back so we can see. We've then got a box with, I think what I may do, let's put them there. We'll slide that to the one side. So we've got a quick installation guide. We'll have a look at that later. You've got an RJ45 cable. Now the Synology NAS 918 Plus that I've purchased does have two network ports and you can team them together but again that's something I've not, never tried myself as yet and I've, I might look at that in more detail a bit later. You don't have to worry about that right now, you just only need one port to set it up. So we've got another RJ45 cable, we've got the power cable, the power, the power supply for the device and that has a bespoke 4 pin plug on the back of it and then your kettle lead plugs into the back there. Um, last of all in this box we've got some screws to attach the hard disk drives within the carriers and we've got two hard drive locking keys so that once you've put the drives into the unit you can lock that up and people can't just open it out. I'm just going to put that to one side and when in the top here we should have the unit itself. There we go, it's actually very, very, very light. I'll pop that off to the one side. So, the unit itself, as I say, is very light. 
It's come nice and neatly packaged, nice little parcel. I always like to try and open things quite neatly because if you ever want to uh, wrap it back up, let's get it that way and slide that off. Well, there it is Synology 918 Plus this station. I'll do a little spin of that there. Uh, in the bottom here, right, if I put it on its lid, in this NAS there is space to put in two NVMe SSDs, solid state drives, and they're used for cache, um, caching storage. If you don't know what I mean by that, one's a cache of read and one's a cache of write. So the idea is, if you're using large files and mass files that you're constantly reading and writing and accessing all the time, you can actually use the SSDs as a cache to hold them files so it doesn't have to go back to the disk to pick it up. That's going to make the access to the files a lot, lot faster. I'm going to be honest with you, and I've only done a small amount of research, but for a home user like myself, there's probably only ever going to be me accessing the files. You really don't need that. If you were a larger or small home office business or a business in an office and you've got a lot of staff accessing a lot of files, that may be a very viable option for you. But for myself, I'm not going to go down that route just yet. Something I may try in the future, but for the minute, I'm not going to worry about that. So we've got the unit itself. And at the front, this has got a four drive base. So the best idea is that when you buy your drives, you buy them all the same size. You don't have to, but that is the recommended configuration. And if I slide that out, that is where your drives are going to go into. And these are pretty cool because I've read that they are completely dampened uh, with like rubber grommets so it stops the drives from rattling inside you, you can see that there, I don't know if you can see that on the camera but you've got the rubber grommets inside um, these side plates it says pull do come off and that's where you attach the drives to the screws but what I'm going to do I'm going to find out how that actually works um, I just have to do a quick bit of reading on that but once your drive's in, you cl we click that back in, slide it in like so, and you put it in the right way, slide it in like so, and click it down and then the drive would be in there. We're going to put the drives in in a minute, but I just need to work out how they actually work. So obviously I've never ever before took any of the drives in or out. I did buy, and I completely recommend that some people put their own types of drives in, other people put, you know, Western Digital Blacks and Greens in. I personally would not do that myself. I've gone for four, six terabyte Western Digital Red NAS drives, and they are, these are the later drives, and they've got the NASware version 3 on. These drives are specially designed so that they're power efficient, they're heat efficient, because obviously they're stacked in quite tightly in the NAS. And they're also designed for 24 seven running. I'm just gonna get this unpacked, so I'm just gonna work out how you take those off. And the second part of the video, which will be coming up right now, there's not gonna be a second part, but we'll call it part two of the vid. I'll be putting the drives into the unit. Okay, so we're here for the other part of the video. And I've just had a quick squeeze at the instructions and uh, actually no tools are involved. For the three and a half inch drives, you require no screws. You'd only need the screws if you've got the smaller type drives that would fit in there at those four points. And when you put the drives in there, you'd have to screw them into the bottom of the plate. So on the drive caddy bay, you've just got a little option there that says pull. And they simply pulls off one side and then pull simply pulls off the other side. The drive is going to go in with the SATA connections and power, ne power connections going towards the back. Um, I imagine that we're going to have to slot that in. And that is a snug fit, I've got to say that. That's gone against the rubber grommets really well. And then is all we do 
we line this up at the back and just click that back in and that's one side done and if we do that on the other side put that over there and click that in making sure it's all in and that hard drive is now secure I mean that's quite tight to be honest now it's important that when you put the drive in we put it in the right way and before I put it in you can double check that you're marrying it up because I imagine if we look inside there you can see where the back of the SATA connection goes in you can also look at the other drives um, pretty much you're going to put your drive in upside down so if you put it the other way it's definitely not going to fit and you're not going to have the front of your drive face uh, coming up there so it wants to go in that way and I'm just going to double check in there that's the right way so we're just going to slide that in push it in and then push that down and the drive is in and using the little key we can turn that and put it in the lock position and that's the first drive in and locked so we're just going to do the other drives now and it's just going to be a repeat of the same process we're going to pull that up push that back, that's back into place and click that in. We're going to lock that drive in, put the key in the right way. There we go, so that's all the drives into the unit and it does feel a whoa, that's heavy now, that is a lot lot heavier. So I'm just going to quickly spin that round, um, get the power cable So your four pins are there and there's an aligning slot just inside. It's pretty important you put that in the correct way. That's just going to align in with that hole there. Get the kettle lead. Take the uh, clamps away. Kettle lead into the like laptop power adapter type of thing. Plugged in there. I've already got a network lead set up so I'm not going to plug one of these in. But You've got two on the back, you've got LAN 1 as indicated here, LAN 2 there, so I'm just going to use LAN 1 for the time being. So I'm going to go and get this into the place of where I'm going to put this. Um, obviously, if it is doing cameras and stuff and you're not sending your cameras up to cloud storage, I would highly advise hiding this somewhere where it's not accessible, because obviously all your footage is going to be on this and you don't want this to be taken away. So I'm going to go and put this in the place, so I'm going to stick it in and then we'll go to the V configuration of the Synology. Alright, thank you for watching this one and the configuration will be coming up soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please do keep watching. I'll see you in the next one.